Hey everybody, it's Brick Waffle again, and today I have a slightly different video than usual for you. I've had a couple of requests to do a video on how to get started in Mod Sauce, and I thought that'd be a good idea. So if you've seen Mod Sauce, heard about it, read about it, whatever else, somehow you've come across that, uh, maybe you've watched some of my Let's Play series, hopefully this will give you an idea of how to get started and how it's a little bit different from vanilla. I know it can be a little bit overwhelming with all these new options, and I wanted to take some of that fear away and give you guys a good place to get started with. So one thing to note, that most of the things I'm going to talk about here work just as, just as well on a survival server uh, as they do in single player, but there's a couple of important things to note. If you do create a new world, you have more world options here and a new world type available to you. If you toggle all the way through to biomes aplenty, that will generate all of the new types of biomes and all the new trees and monsters and all that other stuff. You will get some of that generated into the old biomes, but it can be much harder to find some of the new materials if you don't generate your world that way. You also have your normal options for allowing cheats, bonus chests, generating structures, and all that stuff. Once you're in your world, you can see that most of this is going to look just like regular starting in vanilla Minecraft. The only difference is probably going to be the trees that are around you when you start out. But before we get into punching wood and making picks, there's a couple of important things to note. One is that you start with several books in your inventory. These books also explain more about each of the mods they cover. So for example, this book talks about world domination with open blocks. This talks all about the open blocks mod what blocks are available to you, what items, how to make them, what they do. And you can see there's 52 pages here. There's a lot of information. This is a great way to learn about these mods. And in some cases, you'll even see, like this one, you can click watch video to see a YouTube video about how to use this. The other important thing to note is this panel over here on the right-hand side with all these items in it. That's a mod called NEI, which stands for Not Enough Items. This is a fantastic mod that lets you find things by typing in here. So if I wanted to search for the word sword, and I could spell it correctly, you'll see all the different swords in the mod pack, including some crazy ones down here at the bottom. The important things to know with this is if you left click one of these icons, it will show you how to make it. And if you right click one of these icons, it will show you what you can do with it. Now, if you right click at the or left click at the top here, you can change between shaped crafting, which you do in a crafting table. And down here, we'll show you all the recipes you can do with that. And then crucible furnace, these categories at the top show you what devices you can use to, to interact with these items. So in this case, I can melt an iron sword in a crucible furnace. I can charge up a sword on a blood altar to make a dagger of sacrifice. I can melt one in smeltery. I can cook one in a blast furnace. And I can use it in an aromic crafting to make a killing upgrade for an adjustable chest. So there's a ton of stuff, and this is how you get through it. The other important thing to note is if you're looking at a recipe in this interface and you don't know how to make, for example, this upgrade case, you can just left click that and you can keep going down here iron bars, iron, iron nuggets and you can keep drilling down into all of the different crafting recipes that way. Very, very helpful in figuring out exactly how to craft what you're looking for. The other important thing to note is that when you have your inventory open, you can see there are new tabs at the top of the screen here. This tab allows you to add items from Tinker's Construct. This tab allows you to equip items for dual wielding. And this tab allows you to equip items for Gal uh, Galacticraft. There's also a tiny ring here that's easy to miss called Bobbles, and if you click that, you can equip jewelry from some of the mods as well. Now that we know a little bit about the interface, we're going to start by the, doing the things we normally do in a vanilla Minecraft world, which is just punching some trees, getting some wood, and making ourselves some tools. One thing to note is unlike vanilla Minecraft, you can actually make armor out of wood as well, although it does take wooden logs rather than wooden planks. So it does take a fair amount of tree punching to get your wooden armor. It can be a good holdover especially if you're in a dangerous spot right away. Once you have your materials, of course, you're going to want to go into your inventory, turn some of those into planks to make a crafting table. But there's another easy mod that you can get into right away called Tinker's Construct that allows you to put that same crafting table right back in your interface and get a crafting station. Now, crafting station works very similarly to a crafting table with a couple of key exceptions. One is that if you put items in it and leave the interface and walk away, those items stay exactly where you left them. So if you're collecting materials over time to make a pattern, you can do it that way. The other important thing to note is that once you have a chest adjacent to one of these tables and you put items in it, the crafting station can see the contents of that chest and you can craft from there. That saves you time of going back and forth, opening chests, and finding what you're looking for. So in this case, let's go ahead and make ourselves some wooden armor. You can see that that's the same patterns you would expect using any of the other materials from vanilla Minecraft, only in this case we're just using wooden logs to do that. It does have to be logs. Planks don't work, so keep that in mind. And then we're going to make a few sticks and make ourselves a couple of tools. So obviously we want a pickaxe. 
Maybe we'd like a sword as well. These aren't the greatest tools in the world, but they certainly do work. And another key thing to remember is that if you're not sure how to make things, you can look them up in NEI, but you can also look them up online. There's plenty of videos out there on YouTube, wikis, all sorts of things you can use. There's not a specific mod sauce wiki as of the time of this video. The Feed the Beast wiki has a lot of the same mods in their pack, so that's a good option. And also some of the individual mods have specific wikis of their own. So one thing to note is that you can actually make shields in this mod pack, which is kind of interesting. So this plus shape out of wooden planks, if I can get that right, makes a shield. It can be a little confusing how to equip these things because as you're used to equipping here, you don't see a shield icon. In the mining blade, you can put a shield in this side and a sword in this side, and then by default, click R to bring up your dual wield. That means you can left click with your sword as you always would, and right click allows you to block. Now you can see that stamina bar at the bottom of my screen just above my armor, that drains away as I'm blocking and that shows you how long I can hold the shield in front of me. Another important thing to note is you don't have to limit yourself to putting shields in these offhands. You can actually dual wield swords if you wanted to, or even dual wield a sword in your offhand and a pick in your main hand and be able to use the pick with one hand and defend yourself with the other. That can be very, very handy. Another nice feature of the Mod Sauce mod pack is that if you have items in your hotbar and you run out, but you do have more in your inventory, it will automatically refill that same spot. So if I put a torch there and a torch there, you can see that it grabs the next stack from my inventory. So if I had a stack full of torches all over the place and I was making a big line of these, I could just keep going. I wouldn't have to keep going into my inventory and moving them into the hotbar. That saves a lot of time. It's a really handy feature. As you're traveling around, you may come across structures that have generated in part of your world. These are not like villages, they actually just generate as abandoned buildings, although some of them can be inhabited by witches or other uh, NPC characters. Now, another thing to point out is that not all witches are automatically aggressive in Mod Sauce. Some of the witches are part of the witchery mod, and they just are around in case you get uh, more powerful in that mod and you want some witches to join your coven. Now, all of the details of that would be well beyond the scope of this Getting Started video, but just keep in mind that structures like this barn here are a great place to have shelter that's already lit up, if you have enough wool to make a bed, you can make this a pretty decent starting house, at least while you're looking for something else to do. So how do you get started? What do you know what to do first once you've got yourself a shelter and some basic tools? Well, unfortunately, there's no right answer for that. There's a lot of things you can do. You can look at other YouTube videos from different people, like the hermits who uh, came up with the pack to begin with. They have a lot of awesome stuff they're doing there. Uh, maybe if you like things in my Let's Play series, you could get some inspiration from that. You can read about the wikis online, and you can look at the books they give you starting out, and really just pick a mod and explore it. That's probably the easiest way to get started. Tinker's Construct offers you some great tools to do things like chop down whole trees with a single chop, um, make swords that give you a better chance to get mob skulls, shovels and hammers that can take out a 3x3 three by th uh, three three area with a single blow. There's a lot of interesting things in that to give you better tools. Pam's Harvest Craft allows you to get into different foods. You can get fruit trees and berry bushes and all sorts of recipes like tacos and, of course, waffles. It's a great thing there. And then there's just so many other things. Mechanism, if you like machinery. Advanced uh, Applied Energistics, rather, if you like computing. Computer Craft, if you want to actually write code in Minecraft and program turtles to do things for you. It's just really endless. There's a million different things to do in Mod Sauce and a thousand different ways to do any of them. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If it was helpful to you, please do leave a like down there. If you really like this video and want to see others like it, then please do subscribe. And as always, I've been BrickWaffle. Thank you for watching.